Please, I beg you. Let's get a divorce and just get out. I've inherited the condo and you're no longer of any use to me. Saying this, my husband, Landon, got down on his knees. Being happy after hearing what my husband had to say, I took something out of a drawer. Yeah, sure. Here are the divorce papers. I left immediately, just as my husband wanted. My name is Allie. I am a 34-year-old office worker. I am still working at the advertising company where I started working after graduating from college. At first, I didn't know what was right or left, but after 12 years like this, I seemed to grow up naturally. I am now in a position to manage my subordinates as a general manager, and I am busy working every day. I love my job very much, so I can work as much as I want. Before I knew it, I was neglecting my private life. It's about time for you to stop being a workaholic. You can't continue to be a workaholic. A good friend of mine, Amy, said to me, It's career women like you, Allie, who are declining birth rates in this country, you know. I thought it was fine to be single for the rest of my life. But when my friend who had five children said that to me, I began to seriously think about partners and marriage. Hey, do you want me to get married after all, Mom? Huh? What's the matter? Do you have a fever or something? What? No, I don't. I explained to my mother what Amy had told me and said I wanted to know what my parents thought. My mother laughed and said, I wasn't expecting much from you, and then added, But the thought of you as a bride and the child you will give birth to makes me excited. I knew it. Of course, it's about my beautiful daughter. Anything would make me happy. Well, but my son is already married and they just had a baby, so it's fine, you know. Ah, that's true. I have a younger brother, four years younger than me who has already been married for three years and has one child. He and his wife work together, so their income is very stable and they have a happy family. Looking at my brother's family, I certainly think marriage is a good idea. But I have completely forgotten how to meet people. I don't even remember how to fall in love because I haven't been in love for a long time. Being like that, I thought, I can't be like this. Then, a colleague of mine heard about my situation and decided to hold a matchmaking party. You and I are the only ones left, so let's just do our best in our own timing. My colleague said that to me. I guess she meant, don't be picky with men. But, she's right. I have worked hard at my job, but not at all as a woman. So, I decided not to be too aggressive here, but to keep an eye on things and try to talk to various people. At the party, as expected, my colleagues and I were the eldest people from the group. The men were all in their late twenties, about five or six years younger than us. But they were all calm and easy to talk to, and I simply enjoyed the party. We switched seats and I talked with the man next to me about a number of things. That man was Landon, who later became my husband. Landon was very friendly and cheerful, but not childish or younger than me. Moreover, he and I shared the same taste in music, and we had a lot of fun talking. Then we exchanged contact information and we started meeting together. There was just a live concert of an artist we both liked in common, so we went to see it together. Then we went for a drive, had tea at a cafe, and went out for drinks, and we grew closer and closer and we ended up going out. I thought I had forgotten how to fall in love, but that didn't matter when I fell in love. We just enjoyed our time together so much. And then we started dating, and a year passed in a blink of an eye. I don't think a year has ever felt so fast. Then one day, he invited me to dinner at a fancy restaurant with a beautiful night view. I found myself having a little expectation and as I had the meal with him, I was thinking no way to myself, wondering if it was possible. The meals were very good, but I was more nervous about what was going to happen next. Then he pulled a ring out of his suit pocket and proposed to me. Allie, marry me. Let's build a nice warm family together from now on. Yes. Thus we got married. 
When I reported to my friends that I had decided to get married, they cried and were happy. I'm so happy that you finally found happiness, Allie. Thank you. Please come to the wedding too. Of course, I'll be there. When I reported that to my parents, they were both very happy as well. I knew that both my father and mother were looking forward to my marriage. Then, after meeting both of our families, he and I had our wedding ceremony. My friends and colleagues all congratulated us, and I was beyond happy. Then, my married life with Landon started. Allie, welcome back. I'm home. Dinner is ready. Today is curry. Wow, looks delicious. I'm going to go get changed. My husband always cooks for me because he finishes work earlier than I do. To be honest, I'm not a very good cook, so I really appreciate it. Besides, his meals taste so good. He says it's not his own skill because he follows the recipe, but I still think it's great that he can follow the recipe exactly, and it tastes really good. So I think he's a very good cook. Thanks to my husband's cooking, I can work overtime without any worries. And when I come home tired, a delicious and nutritious meal helps my body recover from all the tiredness. I felt very happy that I was able to get a really good husband. I had no doubt in my mind that I would continue to enjoy my days with my husband, eventually have children, and build a warm family. However, about a year into our honeymoon, there was something that worried me. It was that my husband always carried his phone with him wherever he went. Surely there are men like that, but my husband used to leave it on the table when we were first married, or go to the bathroom or bath with it where I could see it. I felt a little uncomfortable because he suddenly started carrying it wherever he went, as if he had completely changed. Since this was happening so often, I decided to take the plunge and ask my husband about it. You've been clutching your phone all the time lately, but you didn't used to do that, did you? What? My husband was upset to hear me say that. Then, after his eyes swam a little, he said, "Oh, um, so that I can respond immediately when I get a work call or something." Something was very suspicious about him. I thought so, but I still wanted to believe my husband. I thought to myself, let's not pry too much into his life, and let's not suspect anything. So I decided not to say anything else for the time being. However, the more I tried to believe him, the more suspicious things became more and more obvious. My husband often went to a store late at night. I'm going to go by the store right now. Why? I'm craving something sweet, actually. I thought I'd pick up some sweets. I'll get one for you too, Allie. Oh, uh, th thanks. At first, I thought he simply wanted something sweet. But even for that, he often goes to the store frequently. And since it takes only five minutes to get to the store, which is really close by, even if he gets a little lost in the store, he should be able to return home in about fifteen to twenty minutes. But when my husband went to the store, he always didn't return for about forty to fifty minutes. And if he wanted something so sweet all the time, I once bought him something sweet at a pastry store on my way home from work. But my husband did not look very happy, and with a wry smile on his face, he said, "Thank you." It was then that I realized that my husband was not there at the store to get sweets. So, what on earth was he doing there? I was very curious, but I did not know how to ask him. And furthermore, my husband started going out drinking a lot on weekends. He used to come home on time and cook dinner for the two of us. But recently, he had been out drinking with people from work and didn't come home until late at night or until dawn. If he was really busy with work and had to drink as part of his job, I would try to be understanding. But that is not the way I see my husband. Rather, he always seems to be looking forward to the drinks, which really had nothing to do with work. In this way, the number of points that seemed suspicious kept increasing, and I was concerned. Could my husband be having an affair? I couldn't help but keep these thoughts in my mind. I wanted to believe that it was not true. 
At that time, I was still in love with my husband. But he was still acting suspiciously. He kept his phone close to him, went to the store every night, and went out drinking on the weekends. I was very distressed because I was getting bothered. While I was having such a hard time, I received a call from my friend, Amy. Hey, Allie, you're not divorced, right? What? What are you saying all of a sudden? I was surprised to be asked such a question out of the blue. And my friend said, Your husband came to the real estate agency where I work. What? To the real estate agency? My husband has never talked about moving or building a house. Why would my husband go to such a place? As I was thinking this, my friend, looking a little uncomfortable, says, Actually, and began to talk. To my surprise, she told me that my husband had visited the real estate agency with a woman whom I've never seen before. I had never spoken to Landon directly, so I don't think he was aware of me. But I was at your wedding, so I knew what he looked like. And besides, I recognized the same person because he wrote his name down. So it was definitely your husband, Allie. No way. I felt as if I had been hit on the head with something. My husband, in other words, was having an affair. I had no solid proof, but I guessed that was the case. My husband's suspicious behavior until now became clear to me. I felt like I had connected the dots. I didn't want to think that, but I knew it was what I had expected. I was in shock, but I also felt somewhat blown away. To my own surprise, I felt my love for my husband disappear, bit by bit. Then I decided to request an investigation by an investigation agency in order to obtain solid evidence. I could no longer be kind to my husband. He would talk to me in a natural way, but I would get annoyed because the affair would flicker in my mind. So I often acted coldly, and my husband was troubled. Oh, what's wrong? Are you in bad mood? It's nothing. Oh, I see. My husband would look awkward and quietly go into his room and not come out for a while. Then my husband says that from this month, he has been going on more and more business trips and he is away from home for two or three days every week. But I know the truth. I know that my husband only goes to his lover's house. I found this out from the results of the investigation from the agency that I received later on. Around the time I received the results of the investigation, I was ready for things to be done. So I started preparing for divorce. But then something unexpected happened. My father-in-law passed away. My parents-in-law had treated me very well and I wanted to attend his funeral. If I divorce first, I will not be able to go to the funeral. So I decided not to file for divorce at once and wait until after the funeral. After attending the funeral and seeing my father-in-law off well, I finally decided to say goodbye to my husband. But my husband said goodbye to me before I did. Holly, I know this is selfish, but I want a divorce. What? I was surprised that my husband was the one to initiate the divorce. Since the affair seemed to have been going on for a long time, I thought they were just playing around without wanting to get any divorce. Why? Well, th that's... My husband was at a loss for words. He didn't think I would ask him why. I think that's stupid of him, but that's the way my husband is. It's really bad when he doesn't think things through. Well, I guess that's why he is having an affair. My husband couldn't think of a suitable reason, so he said something like this. Oh, you know, I just wanted to be with a wealthy person. I thought I could have a good time with you if I was with the general manager of a major company. But things have turned out differently than I expected, due to some personal differences. Please, I beg you, let's get a divorce and just get out. I've inherited the condo, and you're no longer of any use to me. Saying this, my husband Landon got down on his knees. Apparently, when my father-in-law passed away, he inherited the apartment that belonged to him. So he told me that I was no longer of any use to him. 
I guess he is a selfish person to no end. But thank God he cut me out of his life because I was originally going to divorce him. Being happy with what I heard, I pulled something out of the drawer. Okay, sure. Here are the divorce papers. What? My husband didn't seem to think I had a filled out divorce papers. Hey, why do you have this? Because I wanted to divorce you too. I told him so. My husband was a little surprised, but laughed and said, Oh, I see. Well, I guess we were thinking the same, huh? Then he signed the divorce papers. This condo will be mine, so, well, I hope you have a good life. That's what my husband would say to me. I left immediately, just as my husband wanted. But that wasn't the end of my revenge. I had already rented a new room, so I couldn't move right out. Then I sent a content certified letter to his office. Soon after that, I received a phone call from my husband. Wh why would you send that to my office? Because I need to have you judged for your wrongdoings. Don't you think so? I know you were having an affair. I will make sure you pay me alimony. No, no way! Landon had no idea that I knew that he was having an affair. He seemed a little awkward, but soon returned to a triumphant mood. Well, but I inherited a condo, so I can pay alimony. Oh, what a relief then. You and your mistress's alimony together would be about $60,000. $60,000? Well, we can get by if we sell the condo. My husband says so, but he was quite upset. But I told him a fact. I'm sorry, but I don't think you'll ever be able to sell that condo. Huh? Why not? First of all, that condo is like 20 years old. It's not going to sell in the first place when it's used for some time like that. And next year, a much taller condo will be built next to your condo. So the view of the scenery from your condo won't be as good. And with that, the value would go down in no time. No, no way. My husband apparently didn't think about that. Oh, and you have to pay inheritance tax too, so be careful. He didn't seem to have heard me and didn't respond. I decided I had enough and hung up the phone. Then, through my lawyer, I filed a claim for alimony against my husband and his mistress. Incidentally, as I had predicted, the condo that my husband had inherited could not be sold, and they seemed to be in a lot of trouble. They had no choice but to start living in the condo, but the condo is old-fashioned, and the high floors make it inconvenient and difficult to live in, and the high maintenance costs make life difficult living there. But even if they wanted to let it go, they could only sell it at a low price, so they are unable to take the plunge. When I heard this story from a mutual friend, I thought to myself, suck it up. Meanwhile, I am living comfortably by myself in a newly rented apartment. Since I don't need to be in love for a while, I'm going to continue to devote myself to my work and try to be filial in other ways such as giving my parents trips as gifts. Thank you for watching to the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.